So let's talk about operationalizing a research question. We might have a starting question like this. Why do the imitated vocal fry stimuli sound fake compared to the normal voice stimuli? So that, that's a perfectly good question. It's not quite clear what, what, we can, what we can do with this yet, but we can try to drill down to generate a scientific testable hypothesis from this question. So let's see how that might work. We could have an intuition that maybe this has something to do with speech rate. Maybe, maybe the imitated vocal fry stimuli were spoken at a slower speech rate. This is something that I think some of you have brought up. So, okay, that's good. We have an intuition. So then we can drill down and transform this question into a more specific one. Is the speech rate slower in the imitated vocal fry stimuli than in the normal voice stimuli? All right, so we're starting to get more specific, drilling down. And the nice thing is now that we have this more specific question, we also can get a testable hypothesis from this. So we can say, let's hypothesize that the speech rate is slower in the imitated vocal fry stimuli than in the normal voice stimuli. Okay, good. So there we have a potentially testable hypothesis. Um, but the problem is, we have to operationalize this hypothesis to make it clear how we're going to test it. So here's our hypothesis. The speech rate is slower in the imitated vocal fry stimuli than in the normal voice stimuli. We need to define what we mean by speech rate. We need to define what we mean by slower. Uh, we're lucky here that we don't need to define imitated vocal fry stimuli, and we also don't need to define normal voice stimuli because those are already defined by uh, defined for us from the study. But if we were think if we were trying to figure out is speech rate slower in vocal fry compared to non-vocal fry stimuli, then we would need to figure out what we meant by saying vocal fry versus non-vocal fry. Okay, so uh, how do we define speech rate, and how do we define slower? Um, we need to decide how to define those. We need to, that is, uh, decide how to operationalize a hypothesis in order to figure out how we're going to test it. So if we think about speech rate, there's many ways that we might try to operationalize it. Uh, we might say, oh, let's measure the duration of the whole sentence. Um, or maybe, what about we take the average duration of a word in the sentence? Or, or maybe, how about the average duration of a syllable? Or, or how about the longest duration of a stress syllable? Maybe we should take the shortest duration of a fricative in, in the sentence. Or maybe we should take the duration of a word with the highest F0 peak in the sentence as representing the speech rate. What should the choice be? Well, that's, um, that's the hard part. Um, you would make this choice based on what's been in the previous, previous literature to understand what's reasonable, what you know about linguistic theory, um, um, other assumptions you're making. Um, it's, it's a hard choice. Some of these are less reasonable than others. Um, one thing I'll mention, duration of the whole sentence, um, that doesn't give you very much data. That's just one data point per sentence. Um, shortest duration of a fricative is a little bit strange. That would say, well, okay, to sort of um, have a way to operationalize the speech rate over a sentence, we would find all the fricatives and then find the fricative that had the shortest duration and then that duration would be our representative speech rate. That I don't know how that would make sense, but that is a possible um, way you could define speech rate. So what about what counts as slower? Um, what should we be comparing? Average duration of words in the sentence? Uh, should we, should we um, actually compare durations between individual words? So thank, take the word thank and compare the duration of thank in vocal fry versus non? Should we do this all within a speaker? And should we pull across speakers? Um, how much slower counts as slower? Does it have to be twice as slow? 1.5 times as slow or what? So, you know, those are also things we need to decide. Um, let's take an example. Um, let's say that um, we're going to say word duration and imitate vocal fry stimuli is quote-unquote, significantly longer on average than a normal voice stimuli within a speaker. So what does that mean here? We have gone 
from our original hypothesis to an operationalized one. So we can see how have I defined speech rate here um, as average word duration in the sentence. Um, how about what do I mean by slower? Um, well, I'm comparing within a speaker. So I'm only going to look at um, within a speaker vocal fry stimuli versus normal voice stimuli. And then also how much longer I'm going to just say significantly longer. This is where we then get into uh, inferential statistics, which we won't get into until later in the course. Um, but there we have it. We have an operationalized hypothesis that then allows us to know what measurements we need to take. So if this is our operationalized hypothesis, then that means we need to seg segment out individual words so we can measure the duration of each word. And then we'll need to take some calculations. And, and in particular, we'll need to take the average over all word durations for a stimulus. So you can see how we've gone from this very vague question about what makes uh, the imitated vocal fry stimuli sound fake to a more specific scientific question that we turned into a testable hypothesis, which then we further operationalize so that it's very clear now what the measurements and, um, and also what the analysis needs to be. So there you have it. That's an example of uh, operationalizing the research question.